Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about how to align your spanning tree and HSRP configuration so that they line up with each other. I'm using the same network topology example as usual. So you can see in the diagram here, I've already configured my core distribution switches CD1 and CD2 to be my root primary and secondary for the root bridge. So CD1 is currently the root bridge and I've got blocking links going from axis 3 to CD2 and from axis 4 to CD2. If you look in the next slide, I've just tidied up the diagram a little where I've removed those links which are being blocked right now. Okay, so you can see that at layer 2, my spanning tree configuration, that my traffic going north and southbound is going via CD1 right now. I want my HSRP configuration to match the spanning tree path. So in this example, R1 should be given a higher HSRP priority than R2 so that it is selected as the HSRP active router. That allows traffic from the PCs to take the most direct path to their default gateway. If R2 was the HSRP active router, traffic would have to transit via an extra device over the CD1 to CD2 link. So let's break that down. Right now, CD1 is the root bridge and I'm going to configure R1 as the HSRP active gateway. So if traffic goes from PC1 up to the internet, it goes via axis 3, CD1 and then R1. And if traffic's coming from PC2, it goes to, from PC2 to axis 4 to CD1 and then R1. If R2 was my HSRP active gateway, traffic from PC1 would go to axis 3, then CD1, then CD2, and then R2. So you see it's having to take an extra hop over my core distribution switches. So you want to line up your HSRP and your spanning tree configuration so that traffic is going to go over the most direct path at layer 2 with spanning tree and at layer 3 with HSRP as well. Finally, let's look at an example of how we could do load balancing with aligned HSRP and spanning tree configuration. Going back to the topology diagram again, here PC1 has got IP address 10.10.10.10 and it's in VLAN 10. PC2, you can see it's in VLAN 10 as well. But for the example, imagine that PC2 is in VLAN 20 and it's got IP address 10.10.20. Dot 10. And with the configuration, I'm going to configure it so that traffic for VLAN 10, like PC1, is going to go up through the path via CD1 and R1. And traffic from PC2 and VLAN 20 is going to go up via the path via CD2 and R2. So I'm splitting half my traffic is going to go along the left side path, half my traffic is going to go along the right side path. So I get load balancing this way rather than all traffic going up one path. Also, if one path fails, so if CD1 or R1 or CD2 or R2 fails, the traffic will fail over to going over on the other side of the path. So I'm not going to have any outages if I have any single point of failure. So how we do the configuration, R1 is going to be the HSRP active for VLAN 1. And I'm using router on a stick sub interfaces here. So in R1, I've got interface gig 0 slash 1.10, ncap.1q VLAN 10, IP address 10.10.10.2, no shut, 
and then standby one IP 10.10.10.1, standby one priority 110, and standby one preempt. On R2 for VLAN 10, I give it IP address 10.10.10.3. It's got that shared HSRP virtual IP address of 10.10.10.1, and I give it priority 90. So R1 is going to be selected as the active HSRP gateway for VLAN 10. On my switches, on core distribution CD1, I've set spanning tree VLAN 10 root primary and spanning tree VLAN 20 root secondary the other way around on CD2. So on CD2, it's going to be spanning tree VLAN 10 root secondary. So R1 will be selected as the active HSRP gateway for VLAN 10, and CD1 will be selected as the root bridge with spanning tree. So going back to the diagram again, all traffic for VLAN 10 is going to go up and down the left path via CD1 and R1. For VLAN 20, really just the mirror opposite configuration. On R2, I give it IP address 10.10.20.3 and I set it with standby 1 priority 110 and standby 1 preempt. For R1, I give it IP address, the physical IP address 10.10.20.2 and priority 90. And the gateway address, the virtual IP I'm using is 10.10.20.1. So R2 will be the HSRP active gateway for VLAN 20 using IP address 10.10.20.1. That's my layer 3 config. I also want to configure spanning tree. I want this traffic to go through CD2. So on CD2 switch, I say spanning tree VLAN 20 root primary. And for failover on CD1, I've got spanning tree VLAN 20 root secondary. So that's how you do your configuration where you line up HSRP and spanning tree so that you get load balancing. You also get automatic failover as well. Okay, that was it. See you in the next lecture where we'll cover the final spanning tree topic, which is Portfast and BBTU Guard. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.